good morning everybody. Uh, welcome back or welcome again and now I would like to extend a welcome to anybody and everybody that might be watching this video on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're so grateful that you are joining us in whatever way you're joining us. And again, thank you all for those of you on ACIM Gathering. Thank you all for being here today, those of you here in person in San Francisco. <clears throat> Hello. Okay, so um, the title of my talk today are Blessed Are They That Have Not Seen. Blessed Are They That Have Not Seen. And this is actually uh, a quote from the Bible, but actually it's a quote in A Course in Miracles as well. Uh, the version, the way I just said it, with the words that I just said it, are how it is in the Bible, at least in, in this edition of the Bible, and it's from John uh, chapter 20. And it, and it has to do with the whole story of Doubting Thomas, when Thomas, uh, one of the apostles, uh, doesn't, isn't ready to accept that Jesus has risen from the dead, and he has not seen the risen Jesus yet, but other apostles have seen the risen Jesus, and, and Thomas tells the others that he's not going to believe it until he sees Jesus until he sees the body, not only until he sees it, until he puts his fingers into the nail wounds in his hand, until he puts his fingers into the wound in his side, and until Thomas does that, Thomas is not going to believe. Thomas is going to doubt the story, so that's why we call him Doubting Thomas. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, Thomas gets his opportunity, Jesus appears, and Thomas gets his opportunity to check out the wounds, and it, it's interesting, it's always portrayed like Thomas doesn't even really recognize Jesus when Jesus first appears. And, and of course this would be true because if you really don't believe in something, you're not even going to see it if it's right in front of you. You'll, you'll interpret it differently. But it wasn't until Thomas actually touched Jesus and felt the wounds that Thomas suddenly saw and recognized Jesus as being Jesus and then, you know, acknowledged that Jesus was, was, was risen. And uh, Jesus, you know, says, that's great. And this is the quote. It says, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. So, it's great when we see external proof and we get things in our mind and we feel like, oh, okay, I get it. But there's an even greater blessing, or there certainly is a blessing, that we can have, when we can just know something is the truth, whether or not we've actually seen the external manifestation of it yet. And I think this is the situation and the position that many of us in the A Course in Miracles community are in at times, especially around ideas like healing, healing the sick, raising the dead, and I have discussions because I uh, am an admin for a large Facebook group with 14,100 members, and we have discussions about healing <clears throat> on that group, and there is uh, a certain segment, let's say, of the A Course in Miracles community that's associated with that group that wants to reinterpret the Course's teaching on healing and the body being healed, and it's because they haven't seen it yet. And there's one person who particularly likes to argue, look, A Course in Miracles has been around for 40 years, if it was really about healing and the manifesting bodily healing, we would have seen a whole, we would have seen it. And we haven't seen it. And so, you know, that's that argument. And we have a lot of discussions back and forth, and it's great. And I think of this quote from the Bible and from A Course in Miracles as, blessed are those that have not seen and yet still believe. The truth is, the way I see it, the way I see it, is the reason we haven't seen it, or certain people feel that they haven't seen it, I feel I've seen it, but certain people feel that they haven't seen it, is because they don't believe in it. And you're not gonna, gonna see it if you don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. Thomas didn't believe that Jesus had risen, and even when the risen Jesus was right in front of him, Thomas still didn't recognize him as Jesus until he touched him and felt the wounds, and then he got the flash, oh, that really is Jesus. And that's great. And blessed are those who have not seen and who still believe. This is the quote from A, a Course in Miracles that refers to the same passage. Uh, and this, remember, this is Jesus talking to us, and he says, What you believe you do see, 
That is what I meant when I said, Blessed are ye who have not seen but still believe. For those who believe in the resurrection will see it. The resurrection is the complete triumph of Christ over the ego, not by attack, but by transcendence. For Christ does rise above the ego and all its works and ascends to the Father and to the kingdom. So, the way the Chorus words this is, blessed are ye who have not seen and still believe, because those who believe in the resurrection will see it. If we believe in eternal life, if we believe in healing, if we believe in healing the sick and raising the dead, we are going to see it. And there is a certain time in the whole practice, and maybe it's our time right now or your time, whoever is listening, when you have to just accept the blessing because maybe you don't feel you've seen it or maybe you don't feel you've seen it enough. I think that's usually the case. People say, well, I've seen a little of this and that, but I don't really think I've seen it enough to really get my conviction there. So sometimes it's time to just step forward in faith and just really accept the blessing. In the reading today that Reverend Brad read, there is this. It says, when you ex accepted your mission to project peace, you will find it. And by making it manifest, you will see it. So I think we can easily uh, substitute healing and therefore peace. So when you have accepted your mission to project healing, you will find it. For by making it manifest, you will see it. So I think it isn't just about believing. I think it's also about really understanding that it's why we're here. It's our mission Exactly. We are here to be healers, to extend healing. And when we accept that mission of being healers and extending healing and really actively engage with the Holy Spirit on how to do that in every single moment of our day, of our life, then we start seeing it because we have accepted it in our minds and that blessing makes it manifest. And then the quote goes on and says, It's holy witnesses will surround you because you have called upon them, and they will come to you. So when we really accept this mission of extending peace, the witnesses that will speak of that will surround us because that's us calling to them. And I rest in that, and I see that. Today's lesson, uh, which is one of my favorite lessons, I'm among the ministers of God, lesson 154, has this little prayer uh, towards the end of it. And this prayer is near and dear to my heart. It should be near and dear to all of our CMC ministers' heart because it is the prayer on your ordination certificate. It says, I am among the ministers of God and I am grateful that I have the means by which to recognize that I am free. So the means to recognize that we are free is to accept our mission of being a messenger of God, a messenger of healing. Just like the previous quotation says, to accept our mission of projecting peace, to accept our mission of projecting healing. Because when we accept that mission and dedicate ourselves to it, we will see peace, we will see healing. That's the means. And that's what it means to be a minister of God. And that's the means whereby we recognize that we are free. We give the messages that we are continually receiving, that we are receiving from within, and we give those messages to whomever the Holy Spirit guides us to give them to. And one thing I have noticed, and it's because I've, I've certainly uh, taken this on as my mission in life and my goal in life and my purpose in life, is that when we really accept this mission, I think there's this little thought that people are going to be happy and people are going to be grateful that we're giving them this message of love and peace and light and healing. And, and that's really sweet. And sometimes a few are, but, <laughs> but it seems like even more aren't. <laughs> so if you're doing it for the gratitude, I don't know, don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's going to work uh, because the Doubting Thomases out there uh, are pretty strong in their beliefs and uh, they might not be at all grateful that you are giving them this message. In fact, they might be really uh, pissed off. So, <laughs> but 
we're not doing it for the external manifestation. We're doing it because something from within us is telling us that this is our mission and this is what it is about. And A Course in Miracles wants us to be aware of this. And it says this, it says, you make attempts at kindness and forgiveness, yet you turn them to attack again unless you find external gratitude and lavish thanks. Your gifts must be received with honor lest they be withdrawn. So we want that external gratitude, we want that lavish thanks, and when we don't get it, uh, there is a, a very strong ego tendency, but it's strong to withdraw the gifts. To think, oh, this can't be really what, what it's about, because, uh, you know, people don't seem to like it. Again, blessed are those who have not seen, yet still believe. We have not seen the gratitude and the thanks that we would think would be there, but blessed are us who continue on even though that's not there because we believe in our mission, because our mission has come from within and it's not something that we, we uh, necessarily see reflected out there. I thought it would be good to look at the word blessed uh, just a little bit uh, because of the quote. You know, and, the, and the word blessed, B-L-E-S-S-E-D, it actually can pronounce, be pronounced either way. You can say blessed or you can say blessed. They, you know, blessed and blessed are spelled the same, actually mean the same, and you kind of, you know, there's little kind of usages where things are, are used more frequently in certain ways, but it's actually the same word and it could be used interchangeably. So you can say blessed or you can say blessed. Uh, if you look up the, dictionary, uh, the meaning in the dictionary, it means to uh, make holy or consecrate. You bless something, you make holy or you consecrate it. So we are made holy and we are consecrated when we get our mission from within and not necessarily look for it from without and not base it on what happens from without. When we believe healing is our mission and our practice because we've gotten it from within and we don't seem to be seeing the manifestations that we expect to see, then we will be holy and consecrated if we keep on with our mission from our firm sense of conviction, regardless of the fact that we haven't seen the manifestations that we feel we should have seen. It also means endowed with divine favor and protection. We're blessed. We're endowed with divine favor, favor from the divine, favor from God. We have protection. We're blessed. We're blessed. And we have that and we know that when we continue on with our mission that we've gotten from within. It also means endowed with, we're, we're blessed with health, we're blessed with abundance, we're endowed with it. And it means also bringing pleasure or relief as a welcome contrast to what one has previously experienced. Let me repeat that one. Bringing pleasure or relief as a welcome contrast to what one has previously experienced. Like, I haven't been sleeping well, but I was blessed with a good night's sleep last night. You know, I haven't been feeling well, but I was blessed with feeling well and strong last night. So it means all of those things, and it's such a, a wonderful word. So think about that when you think about blessing. And that's what we will get when we continue to believe even though we may not have seen. Now, actually, I, I see miracles every day and healing every day, and it's, it's little things and it's big things. Uh, a number of us went to see Reverend Lucas last night, uh, who did a performance piece with four other um, people, and uh, Lucas did a little 15-minute uh, solo piece on the stage. I'm so proud of you, Reverend Lucas. I thought you did a great job. And, the, and all the other uh, performers were really good. Too. It was really interesting. Uh, but I was pressed with time, and it was a little early. And I sometimes, you know, frequently on Saturday, I have more time to get ready for everything. And, I, you know, all throughout the day was, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. But I just kept... Work walking forward in faith. I said, you know, I felt the guidance to, to say I would go to this this performance, and I just I'm just going to accept that it will work out. And sure enough, uh, all the things that I had to do got done. I was able to leave uh, the office, which is way on another side of town, and uh, the traffic was incredibly heavy. 
And where Lucas was performing is in a, a very dense traffic area, and I knew I, I had to be able to find a parking place. And if I drove around for 20 minutes and not find a parking place, I would be late. And so, you know, me, I've talked about this, there's the parking angel, there's Holy Spirit, and, and there's that little scene that I always remember, this is from uh, the Matrix movies with the Spoon Boy, where this, where this little boy is bending, with a shaved head is bending spoons, and he tells Neo that you don't bend the spoon, that's impossible, you just remember the truth. And Neo says, well, what's the truth? And the, the Spoon Boy says that there is no spoon. And, and Neo says, there's no spoon. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the boy says, no, and then you will realize that it is not the spoon that bends, but only you. So, uh, and then the spoon goes, Nye! it's a great, great little scene. Uh, <laughs> and then Neo is able to bend the spoon. So, I don't manifest the parking place. I don't bend the spoon. I don't manifest the parking place, really, literally, because that's actually impossible. I just realized the truth, and the truth is there's no lack in the universe. I've been guided to be somewhere. I will be able to be in that place. The work will get done, and there will be parking for me when I get there, because abundance is the truth. So I'm driving down 16th Street, and I, I see a parking place right in front of the restaurant that I know we're going to eat at afterwards, but there's this SUV parked blocking the parking place. And so I pull up in back of the SUV. I'm a little bit annoyed that this guy is blocking the parking place, but he doesn't seem to be moving. So I, I pull up alongside and roll down the window. I says, could you move up just a little bit so I could get into the parking place? He goes, yeah, I don't want to move up. He goes, because if I move up, I'll be blocking that car in front of me. And I says, well, I'd love to get into the parking place. And he goes, well, I'm just waiting here for somebody. And I said, how long will it be? And then he said, oh, she's here. And so this person gets in the car and takes off. And for a moment, I was a little nizzed at him, thinking like, you know, you were blocking a parking place. But then I got, I got it. I got the truth. He wasn't blocking the parking place. He was saving it for me. <laughs> he was saving it until I got there. <laughs> and then I pulled right in right there. And I was 10 minutes early to go uh, listen to Reverend Lucas. And whoa! It's just a matter of perception. You get to choose how you look at these things. I was feeling real tired yesterday, and I didn't think I, I had the energy to do all the things that I had to do. And sometimes when I feel like that, I go take a little nap. But I thought, I can't take a nap. i got too much to do. And then I just went within, asked for guidance. The guidance says, do the thing that you really don't want to do. And the thing that I didn't really want to do was to write this long letter, this long email to this person who wants us to do something that we're not going to do. And to really, I had explained to her in a loving kind of way that, no, we're not going to do the thing that you want us to do, and here's why. It's about the conference in Boston. And I, you know, wasn't looking forward to writing this, this email, but there was a lot of things to explain. So, but I was, as I, and I, I, I spent an hour spent an hour writing the email, rereading it, and sent it. And by the time I sent that email, I was so energized. I had, that, that's how I got the energy to do the rest of the work I had that day. And then I really got it. What was making me fatigued wasn't anything really external. It was the fact that I was resisting doing the one thing that I really had to do. And so I did it. And I've seen all kinds of, of healing in the world. And, you know, personally, the biggest thing that I heal from personally is is mental illness. I, I, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I should be, you know, having a very low stress job or maybe no job at all uh, because I had serious mental illness problems many times in my life and I'm totally free of them and on no medication at all. And uh, I'm sure there are a number of psychiatrists who would have said that never was going to happen. But here it is, you know, I'm, I'm a walking example of living a life that the medical establishment would have said I would not have been able to live, actually told me that I would not have been able to live, and which my father wasn't able to live either. It's an inherited mental condition, bipolar disorder. And uh, sometimes I, I really feel like I heal from it in a way to complete the healing that my father wasn't able to do. You know, it's generational. He didn't have access to, you know, the, the, the resources that I had access to. And I realized actually this week that Probably my whole wanting to move into healing and embracing things like A Course in Miracles was to continue that healing that my father never really was able to manifest. But I carried that. It just took another generation. So, Dad, woohoo, we did it. <laughs> you know, blessed are those who still believe even though they don't see. But we do get some little uh, help. And the little help is we get glimpses. 
I've talked about that. I've given whole sermons on this. You know, there's, there's cracks in this cosmic egg, and we get little glimpses. No matter how closed off we are, sometimes the world gives us little glimpses, and we have to learn to identify those glimpses. It's very important. And this actually is in A Course in Miracles. So, okay, so vision will come to you at first in glimpses, but they will be enough to show you what is given you who see your brother sinless. And just to show you, this is not an isolated case. No one in this distracted world but has seen some glimpses of the other world about him. Yet while he still lays value on his own, he will deny the vision of the other world. And one more. If you see glimpses of the face of Christ behind the veil, looking between the snow-white petals of the lilies you have received and given as your gift, you will behold each other's face and recognize it. So look for the glimpses. Look for those little moments, like I had last night with the parking place. You know, the glimpse even wasn't really with the parking place. The glimpse was when I got that little input of truth that this man wasn't blocking the parking place. He was saving it for me. That was his guidance. He was saving it for me. And that way I loved him and blessed him instead of being angry at him for blocking the parking place. Those things, look for those things. When you get those things, those shifts in perception, love them, embrace them, declare them, strengthen them. True blessing comes from a continued internal feeling, transformation. You know, a word for that is metanoia, uh, which means that you've had the spiritual transformation from within. It didn't come from anything because uh, out there, it comes from within. So there is a, a metanoia that comes from the studying of the material that we study. And that provides the faith and the belief to keep on keeping on even though you don't see the results. And that gives you the blessing to believe even though you have not seen. And that's what makes us a stronger miracle worker and that's what enables us to see those glimpses and reinforce them so take your blessing when things don't seem to be the way that you would hope that they would be and know that you are being consecrated to see more manifestation as time goes on amen that's my talk for today amen. thank you